One of the biggest reminders that I tell myself on really bad days where I am picking myself apart or having trouble looking myself in the mirror is that I remind myself that not every single body looks the same. Or, you know, even if I were to eat and exercise the exact same way as some of these people that like I've idolized their bodies for so long, like we would still look very different. And I think for me for so long, because I was stuck in the mindset of if I eat a certain way or if I exercise a certain way, I'm going to look like this person. Having that mindset for so long, I was striving for something that wasn't realistic because my genetics, my body type, my body makeup is different than everybody else's in the world. Like no matter what, my body, your body, anybody else's bodies are never going to look the same. No matter how much, you know, again, we eat like those people, we exercise like those people, like that's just not realistic because their body type is different than mine. And it was one of those things that I had to acknowledge and I had to work on. Because again, for so long, I had this mindset that, you know, I could get to that ideal body or to what those people look like if I could only work hard enough. And I had to kind of stop looking on the internet at, you know, my favorite celebrities or even on Pinterest when I would look out up like workout routines or when I would look up like meal plans or healthier foods, you know, those people that you see that you're like, I want to look like them. And if only again, I could work hard enough, I could look like them. I think for so long, I told myself, then that would make me happy. And I realized that, you know, certain foods are going to work for other people and they're not going to work for me. There's going to be certain exercises that work for other people and they're not going to work for me. And I think that going into this journey, I told myself I need to figure out what's going to work for me and then continuously do that. Like what foods make me feel good over what foods would make me feel bloated or, you know, how greasy foods make me feel you know, what exercises make me feel good, what exercises don't feel good, you know, what's not necessarily working. Because once you're able to start doing that for yourself, once you're able to really kind of connect yourself in that way, the easier it is to take care of yourself and to take care of your body. And I think that for a lot of us that are now in our 30s or, you know, late 30s a lot of us grew up in the 90s to early 2000s and going through that time I can remember back to like all the magazines that I would buy that would like tell you how to eat or tell you how to exercise and like all the magazines that picked celebrities apart you know cellulite and stretch marks and they would have you know a picture of them when they looked good and then a picture of them at the beach and they would be picking them apart. And I still think to this day, you see a lot of that, that people will post pictures of celebrities and they're like, oh my gosh, what happened to them? I can't believe they let themselves go. And it's like, not every single day is your body going to look the same. And you're going to have times where you are doing exactly what you need to do and you're looking really good. And then there are times that like you kind of just let yourself go and you eat things you know you shouldn't eat or, you know, you're just doing whatever you do. And I think it's even a thing to say, like, even throughout the day, your body changes, you know, all the time from when you wake up to the end of the day, your body, body's constantly changing, like with what you're eating and with what you're doing. And I just think it's important to acknowledge that 
everybody has cellulite or everybody has stretch marks. Like these are normal things. And just because, you know, all these celebrities or all these people that you idolize don't have them doesn't mean that it's not normal. Like these are normal things that happen to your body. And again, I think that a lot of these people we idolize, they have, you know, these luxuries we don't have. You know, the doctors to make them look the perfect way they look. The chefs to make them food so they don't have to cook. The trainers to help them get their body exactly the way they want their body. And, you know, the rest of us don't have that. And I think it's important to realize, too, that your body is always ever-changing. And I even said this in my, you know, video discussing clothing, is that, like, even if I worked out and ate exactly the best that I could and got the flattest stomach that, like, I think in my mind would make me happy, I would still be in, you know, these bigger sizes because that's just my body type and my body makeup and all of us you know have different genes that make up our body and that's perfectly okay and you know going from a a, a kid to a teenager to an adult like your body's going through so many changes and again what you used to look like in like your teenage years you're not going to look like that as an adult because your body is ever changing. And with your body ever changing, you just have to figure out what's going to work for you and what's going to work for your body. And once you're able to find that, then it's easier to, you know, maybe get yourself to where you want to be. And for me, like, I know certain foods make me gassy or make me bloated, and I try to steer away from those foods, and I've started to begin to, you know, reflect on what exercises make my body, you know, feel certain ways, so then I know what works for me. But again, it it was hard to, you know, get myself to realize that not every single body is the same. And once I was able to really get that like ingrained in myself to say like what works for other people isn't necessarily going to work for you, the easier it's been to again figure out what's going to work for me and how I feel around that. And I've definitely, you know, stepped out of my comfort zone and, you know, started buying things that I necessarily wouldn't buy. And I started, you know, treating my body different and really just kind of like being grateful for the body that I have because I only have, you know, one body and I can't spend the rest of my life striving to be someone that I'm never going to be or strive to look like somebody I'm never going to look like. And I don't know how many other people just need to hear that is that, you know, you are you and uniquely you and your body is unique for you. And no matter how much you try, you can't change who you are and you can't change your body type. And there's nothing wrong with my body and there's nothing wrong with yours. And once we, again, I think are able to realize that, the easier it is to reconnect with yourself and to be more comfortable with yourself and to be more comfortable in your own skin. And for me, I think that coming to that realization has become enlightening for me to say, okay, no matter what I eat or how I eat, no matter how I exercise, no matter what exercise I do, like I'm not going to look like that. And allowing myself to be okay with that and then allowing myself to say, okay, what do I have to do to, you know, take care of my body? Like how, do, how should I fuel my body? What, do, what kind of exercises do I need to do that just feel good for my body has been my you know, biggest journey. 
And I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys because I think, you know, again, still to this day, teenagers are looking at these people that they're idolizing or that they want to look like. And you're seeing the media always bashing people for gaining weight and losing weight. And, you know, even people I think that I saw on YouTube that, you know, looked a certain way and then they started working out a different way and they kind of started toning their body. And people are like, oh my gosh, you look so bad. Like, I liked you the way you looked before. It's like, you have to realize that sometimes the people that you look at that look that certain way that you think is good is their actually their worst times. Is there times they weren't taking care of their body? They weren't the healthiest. And, you know, once they've decided to take care of their self, then people want to bash them for changing. And some of the celebrities that kind of come to mind for me are kind of like Selena Gomez and uh, Ariana Grande. You know, Selena has, you know, always had issues with her weight and over her life, social media and media has just like always bashed her because she's gained weight and she's lost weight and no oh, she looked really good no oh, now she looks not good and it's like I can't imagine how hard that can be or like even Ariana Grande you know she went through a rough time and when she looked her best and people thought she was so beautiful she was actually at her worst and then she comes back as like I'm taking care of myself and I feel the healthiest and then people are like, oh my gosh, like what happened to you? You don't look too good. And I can't imagine, you know, having that as something that you're always like seeing. Like I, again, I'm deciding to share this journey on the internet and I, I just don't know what it would be like for people to be maybe looking back at my old you know, content or my old pictures and be like, oh, at this point you looked really good. And for them to not know that when I looked that good, I was not eating right. I wasn't taking care of myself. Like mentally I was in the worst place. And you don't know that. Like I can truthfully say 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when I was like probably at maybe the body type or the size I thought I wanted to be, I was mentally in a horrible place. I was eating horribly. I was drinking a lot of alcohol. I was smoking cigarettes a lot. I was smoking weed. I was, you know, putting my body through the ringer and I was not in a great place. And when I started to recover from that and when I started to eat things and stuff of course I gained a lot of weight and that's why I'm here like where I am now but I can say like where I'm here right now yes I am overweight and I've gained a lot of weight but I think I'm more healthy than I was in the past like going through whatever you know at that time I was going through and I just think that we need to, you know, be more gentle with people because you don't necessarily know what people are struggling with or where people are at in life and what you think was their best looking, you know, or where their body looked the best that might have been like their worst time or might have been, you know, not their healthiest to them and when you decide to go on the journey to just take care of yourself and, you know, allow your body to be your body and to live, you know, your happiest and confident and being comfortable with yourself, I think that that is when you're the most beautiful and you, you know, feel great. And I know, again, for me, like, I know I am overweight, but like I feel good in my body and I feel like I'm the healthiest in my mental health and overall just like healthiest I could be really where I'm at in life. And, you know, again, I've talked about it like once I know that I'm, you know, comfortable with myself and confident in myself, then I, you know, I'm going to allow myself to maybe work on losing weight. 
but I think we first have to work on you know loving our bodies where we're at and realizing that you know we're just made up differently from everybody else and we're not supposed to be like everybody else and again not every single body on this planet is meant to be the same and that's great because you're you know uniquely you and you're allowed to look however you want to look and you're allowed to love your body at whatever stage your body is at. And right now I know that I am just learning month after month to really be confident and comfortable in my own skin. And I'm learning to love my body, you know, exactly with the way it looks. And again, buying things over the last, you know, few weeks of things I normally wouldn't buy has felt really good. And I feel like the more I work at this, the more, more I am just so proud of myself and just like happy with who I'm becoming and for how much I'm learning to love my body. So I just wanted to share that with you today. If you're somebody who's struggling with their body, I just want you to remember that even if all if we all ate the same and exercised exactly the same, we would still look very different and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You are beautiful and you are worthy of love and care and you can't live the rest of your life, you know, striving for something that's unrealistic. You can't spend the rest of your life, you know, hating yourself. And I realize that too. I can't spend the rest of my life hating my body because at the end of my life I'm just going to be upset that I spent so much time you know downgrading myself instead of just living life and buying clothes that fit and just feeling beautiful on the inside and the outside and just you know truly being me so thanks for letting me sit down and chat with you guys today and I will talk to you again real soon in the next vlog bye guys mm -hmm.